subjects and that means my school until 8th class from the government school in Hindi medium. After uh, 8, we had a school in the town which was basically 5 kilometers away from the village. We used to go by foot on daily basis. When I joined IIT Delhi, uh, it was basically a proud moment for me and for my whole family. But then once I get into the system, I realize that, you know, there are very different people from different backgrounds, different stories, different learnings and all. And I was uh, from a very small village, not knowing English especially. And all the classes, people speak in English only. So I had a struggle initially to adjust with people uh, in the college. Somehow I used to translate all the English and Hindi first and then used to understand what the professor is saying actually. My father was really annoyed with the quality of our education. He mm -hmm. said, it looks like we're just teaching our children how to be cogs in a machine for the industrial age. We're not teaching our children how to be thinkers, learn how to learn, create their own reality, believe in themselves, critique themselves, like all the vital skills, all of these things my dad felt we were missing. So one day I came from school and I said, Pa, you know, I decided I'm going to be a good citizen, I'm going to learn how to learn. I'm going to be financially independent. I don't want you to support me anymore. What? I'm going this to be... thing randomly you just came home and said this. Yeah, thing. yeah. This is with my oh, brother's okay. conversation. We had planned this whole thing. I think 16, 17 years. And then he said, Raghava, I'm really touched. Come, give me a hug. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. Hold that thought. Do I have to go to school if I'm doing all of this? Because this is the purpose of education, right? And he was like, uh, I used his own philosophy against him, quit formal education to pursue a real understanding, a spiritual understanding that was a model in his head. But for me, it had become my own way of looking at education. So right. I quit school using his philosophy, took a one year sabbatical, which still continues, I don't know how many decades later. It's always funny that um, as engineers, we have a lot of friends from the business school and we always undermine what they do. Was well, like, you know, we do the real stuff, you guys just do the talking and stuff. get into the business. It was like really the real deal. It is as hard as, as engineering from a different level. You need to be a straight line emotionally. Don't get overexcited. Don't get like, you know, too dark and just follow the sine wave. You have to really learn how to become a straight line and it's not going to be easy. Every experience we had is a learning experience, whether we like it or not. Every day is just a day one. To me, you know, the wake up call was, I remember, you know, I had excruciating body pains. So I went and saw my physician. He kind of wired me up and, uh, you know, he said, look, you know, everything looks good, but you need to change your lifestyle. And uh, he knew, right, my journey because I used to share with him uh, whenever I used to meet with him. Then I, I just didn't understand. And I said, look, I'm a vegetarian. I don't smoke. Yeah. I rarely drink a glass of wine. I work out. Yeah. What else do you want me to do? You know, what is it that I can change? He said that, you know what? I need to spend more time out of work. Then he started asking me, you know, how did your board meeting go? And how was your team meeting? I just realized that the more questions he asked me, I obviously had stored, you know, so many emotions and I did cry. And he said, it's okay to cry. You know, you don't need to feel shy or you don't need to think you're vulnerable, right? To show your vulnerability. Well, so after my high school exams, I didn't do that amazingly. I did all right. I got into university, but it wasn't the standards that up till then I had uh, managed to achieve. And I had a conversation with my dad at the time. I had wanted to retake the exams. And he told me, well, you could retake it. And, you know, if you put in the effort, maybe you would very much do better than you did the first time. But I think he understood intimately the idea of an opportunity cost. And he said, why, why do you look backwards? Why don't you look forward instead? And, and it's true, right? Because if I had looked backward, I would have given up the opportunity to pursue something else with my time. At the age of four, Unfortunately, I lost my father to, uh, to a heart attack overnight. It was not something we expected at all. But very quickly, uh, a family that was just getting by, you know, overnight, we really struggled to make ends meet. And so a lot of my life and a lot of ways in which I've approached my decision making to life has been guided, you know, by something that happened very early on. Because those earliest memories for me are memories of seeing the trauma that my mom was facing. Um, memories of 
seeing how friends and family would feel that sense of sorrow and pity for the fact that here's a 30 year old widow with a four year daughter, myself, and my younger brother who was only four months at the time that was happening. What I took away from that time was that I really had to find a way to support my mom. I should never need anything from anybody. And not only that, I should be able to be the source of support for my small family at the time. I joined the Canadian Army at 19 in the infantry, and uh, it ended up being just a tremendous opportunity uh, in so many ways, both professionally and personally over the 30 years that I was part of the Army. The easy part was the decision. Sometimes the harder part is getting through all the gates that they have, like basic training and things. So there was a few few times in the first year of training that I thought, oh boy, this is going to be a little bit tougher than I originally planned for. But it was a, it was well worth it. We rented a bunch of snowmobiles to go over snow. And so I got on one and I was running from outpost to outpost. And then I came off the track. So I got off my skidoo and I sunk up to my chest. And I'm six foot six. So oh my I, gosh. I said, I've got a real problem here because I'm never going to get out of this without some help.